Yellowstone, April 2025, learn how the boundaries of the magma chamber beneath Yellowstone were discovered and discover how those boundaries hint at the volcano's future behavior. Ask any geologist about the magma reservoir beneath Yellowstone and it'll tell you it's there. But exactly where it is has been much harder to pin down. However, a new study published in Nature suggests that a team of researchers has finally pinpointed the exact location of the upper boundary of Yellowstone's magma reservoir. By locating the top of the magma chamber and characterizing its contents, the study has provided important insights into Yellowstone's future volcanic activity, suggesting that the volcanic system is unlikely to erupt anytime soon. While the existence of a magma reservoir beneath Yellowstone has been well established, its location and contents have been less clear. That's because researchers have long struggled to pinpoint the exact location and contents of the top of the magma chamber, which has important implications for predicting future volcanic activity. Seeking to map the top of the magma chamber for the first time, the authors of the new paper sent an artificial seismic pulse through the subsurface beneath Yellowstone. They then use a network of portable geophones to map the subsurface. The resulting seismic reflection images reveal that the upper boundary of the magma reservoir is about 3.8 kilometers, about 12,500 feet below Yellowstone's surface, and is filled with a mixture of solid and liquid rock and gas, the latter of which is being ejected or released from the magma. Three point eight kilometers is significant, said Jamie Farrell, a geologist at the University of Utah and chief seismologist at the U.S. Geological Survey's Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, according to a press release. In fact, that depth gives geologists information about the volcano's future threat. We know what pressures are going to be there and how bubbles are going to come out of the magma, Farrell said in a press release. While bubbles of released gas are a key factor in explosive eruptions, they are not accumulating in Yellowstone today. One of the things that makes these eruptions so powerful is that when gas gets trapped, it becomes very explosive, Farrell said in the release. However, much of the gas beneath Yellowstone's volcano is not trapped, rising through geothermal features on Yellowstone's surface. As magma rises from deeper in the crust, volatile materials like CO2 and H2O are dissolved from the melt. Because of their buoyancy, these materials tend to accumulate at the top of the magma chamber, said Fan Chai Lin, a geologist at the University of Utah and an author of the paper, according to the release. But if there is a channel, the gas can escape to the surface. To track Yellowstone's magma chamber, previous research has turned to the University of Utah's network of permanent seismographs, which monitors seismic activity in Yellowstone. Readings taken from these seismographs after earthquakes have helped scientists map Yellowstone's magma chamber in the past, although the readings are spotty, leaving the chamber's exact boundaries unknown. So the paper's authors looked at readings from 650 portable geophones scattered around Yellowstone's roads which revealed its seismic activity in more detail. They then induced their own seismic activity, using a vibrosis truck to send artificial vibrations through Yellowstone's subsurface at 110 separate locations. In a sense, we're causing our own earthquakes, and we're recording all that data on seismometers, Farrell said in the release, and because we're pumping so much, we're able to get much higher resolution images of the subsurface. By displaying seismic reflection images from the readings, the paper's authors identified the top of the chamber and its contents. While about 86% of the top of the reservoir is solid rock, about 14% is pore space, which contains molten rock, fluids, and gases. That helps us understand more about the heat engine that drives Yellowstone and about how the melt is distributed. That could have implications for how we view volcanic hazards, said Mike Poland, the scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, according to the release. Yellowstone is in many ways a laboratory volcano, and what we learn at Yellowstone can be used to better understand volcanoes in other parts of the world that are much more active, but much harder to study.